Hey guys, welcome back. In this first lesson, we're going to start by laying out our very first level for our super jumpy plumbers. We are going to create a sprite atlas. It's going to keep all of our sprites we're gonna be using in one simple little atlas. Then we're gonna reference those sprites in that atlas to create tiles that we're going to build a tile map with. And then we're gonna use that tile map to paint our levels, uh, at least one level in this lesson. So what I wanna do is create a brand new project from Unity Hub here. I am going to click on new. I wanna call this Super Jumpy Plumbers. I'm gonna use the latest version available to me, which is 2019.2.0A4. This is still in beta, but it works pretty good. And we're gonna make sure that we select 2D as the default template and create project. Now inside of this folder, we have some sprites we're gonna be using to lay out our levels. There's a few different styles in here that we can choose from, uh, but I'm gonna be going with these blue ones, I think will work pretty good for this. And then we'll also use a little red guy here as our enemy. And we'll just find something in here that will work pretty good for our spawners. Uh, maybe these style tiles like that. So the first thing I wanna make sure I do is go up to layout and go to default. So we all have this exact same layout here. And I wanna create a new folder that's going to hold my sprites. That way I can just drag and drop some sprites that I wanna use right into Unity. So I know I wanna use some floating platforms. These right here will work pretty good. So holding down shift, I'll just select these three, drag these in into my sprites folder. I also want to have some non-floating platforms, some just like solid grounded platforms. So I'll select these right here and drag those in. Maybe just a single tile platform that has the edges all around it and is also floating could be useful. And maybe the one that's not floating as well. Also, we can grab some decorations here, holding down control now, just selecting a few of these. This solid blue tile, which is going to be the tile that goes under our ground tiles. Also the object for our spawners, the thing is gonna spawn our enemies. I'll use this red sprite right there. I'll use this as my enemies. And I also wanna have a coin and some kind of gem that can be our life. So this can be like a bonus point if we get that. And this can be a one up or like a one man. So we'll just bring these into our sprites folder. Now again, with shift selecting all of these, I wanna make sure that I have the pixels per unit set to 128. And that's because my sprites I know by default are 128 by 128. So I wanna make sure that in Unity, one sprite is one unit by one unit. That will give us that result. Now inside the sprites folder, I also wanna create a sprite atlas. And this is going to be a map that we can put all of our sprites into. And whenever a sprite is referenced that is in this atlas, It'll make it a lot more efficient because it will have to just simply reference this one asset and then using a coordinate, find the sprite it wants and grab that sprite. Instead of having to reference an individual sprite that is just on its own, you have to bring in each individual sprite. This will have to just load in the single atlas and then grab the sprite it wants. So I'll call this main. So now with my atlas selected, I wanna click on the lock here. So we've actually locked the inspector. That way if I select something else, it is still selected. And then I will take all of these except for my atlas and drag and drop it onto the objects for packing. And that'll make sure it adds it to this atlas. Now if I click pack preview, we can see this is what my atlas looks like. The next thing I want to do is use these sprites for a tile map so we can actually start painting tiles in our game. Right now they are just tiles on a sprite atlas. Right now they are just sprites on a sprite atlas, but I wanna make a tile map from these sprites. So I'll create a new folder called tiles. And now I want to go to game object, 2D object, and I wanna create a tile map. And this will create a grid object with a tile map child. So if I look at this, if I unlock the inspector here, we can see that the grid object just has a grid component, which allows us to easily define a grid with a size and a gap and the type that it is. And the tile map is actually the tile map that's going to render our tiles. It's where we can paint our tiles onto it. But we don't currently have a tile palette of tiles to paint onto our tile map. So if I go to window and I go down to 2D, 
tile palette. I'm just going to dock this over next to my inspector here. I want to create a new palette in the drop down above. So I'll go to create new palette and I'll call this one main as well, just to keep it very simple and click create. And I want to create this inside my tiles folder, select folder. Now all I have to do is take the sprites I want to add to my tile palette so we can paint them onto our tile map. So I'm just going to select those holding down shift and this drag and drop them right into my tile palette. And again, I want to put this in the tiles folder. There we go. Very simple. So now what I all I have to do is just take and I can paint these right into my scene. So to do this, what I want to do is I want to paint on a couple of different layers. I want to have my layer that's going to be the collision layer. So if my player is walking on the ground, we will have a collision mask on that or just a simple 2D collider on the ground tiles that the player can stand on top of. I then want to have my decoration layer, which is just going to be my plants so that you don't interact with them, but they're still on a tile map and they're still rendered. Uh, the same way they're just not on the layer that has the colliders on it and then i want to have another layer that's going to be for the two-way platforms they are going to be uh they are going to have 2d colliders on them but they're going to have an effector that says these interact a little differently than a standard collider because you can't collide with them if you're coming from below them. But if you're coming from above them, you can collide with them. So it's a little different. So we're just going to put that on a different layer so we can add the effector to those colliders only. So I'm going to select my paintbrush and I'm going to be on my main tile map. I'll call that main tile map. And I'm simply going to paint my ground tiles. So I'll take this with my paintbrush selected and I'll just paint. And in fact, we'll add a little gap in the middle here. Just take that one and then take that one. And then I'll just erase this. And perhaps I want to raise this up a bit so we can add some ground below it. I'll just select those with the selection tool and then grab my move tool and drag them up. And then I can paint below that. Just like that. And I want to add a little overlap off the side of the screen here. Just because of the way our screen wrapping is going to work. Uh, I don't want the objects, if they walk off the right side of the screen, to start falling uh, right when they get off the side of the screen. Because we want to give them a second to be able to teleport to the next side of the screen. Which we'll get into that later on. But just want to make sure that we have a little, uh, little ground hanging off the side of the screen here. And now with this specific tile map, the one that we painted the ground on, I want to add a tile map collider 2D. And what this does is adds a simple collider that will kind of match the shape of the tile uh, to each individual tile. But I don't want to do that because um, there's no reason to have all these individual colliders whenever it just all needs to be the same collider. So what I can do is add a composite collider 2D to the same object. Now this will add a rigid body 2D to it for the way that it actually works and the way it calculates it, but that's fine. But what I do want to do is make sure that it's just static. It doesn't actually fall with gravity or you can't push it around. It's just there. And what I want to do then is take my tile map collider and say that it is used by composite. That will let the composite collider kind of override the tile map collider and do its thing with it. Now we see it's just one big collider. And that's exactly what we want. And it's on both sides here because of how it works. So now I want to create another tile map for our decoration. So right click on grid, 2D object, tile map. And I will call this decorations. And I want to make sure that I select decorations as my active tile map. And with that selected, I want to just grab and paint a few with my paintbrush selected, a few decorations on the ground here. Just like that. Now these do not need colliders on them. They don't need to be able to interact with the player in any way. They just need to be there in our world as decorations. And the next tile map I want to create is going to be the one way platforms. Now this is separate from the other ones, like I said, because it has to have an effector that changes the way the colliders work for just these tiles. For instance, the way it's going to work is if our player is lower than the platform. If the Y value of the player is lower than the platform, then we're not really going to be able to collide if we're trying to jump through the platform. But if it's greater than the platform, 
then we're going to be able to collide with the platform. Now, it's a little more complicated than that, but luckily for us, Unity handles it with a simple component. So what I want to do with this one is I want to create another uh, composite collider on it, which will add a rigid body once again that we want to make sure that that's static. And I want to add a tile map collider once again and say this is used by composite. So now if I were to start painting on this, one way platform is selected there. Paint on this with this guy here. And then we can just draw this out. We can see the collider being generated as we go, which is very cool. That seems uneven, there we go. And the last thing we have to do for this to work is simply add platform effector 2D. And it says it will not function unless there is one enable 2D collider with used by effector. So what that means is our tile map collider, which is used by composite. So it's letting the composite kind of override its settings. I need to make sure now that the composite collider, which is now in control pretty much, says, okay, this can also be used by something. So used by effector. So this handles what this can do, and this handles what that can do, which again, handles what this can do. Pretty simple stuff. And there we have it. We can see the direction that we will collide with and the direction we will not collide with. You can change this by changing the surface arc, by saying it's not one way, offsetting the rotational value, just like that. But for us, the default is exactly what we want. And that's going to be it for our first level and for our first tile map setup. We're going to add more levels later on with some more, uh, maybe a couple more levels at least, with some more tile map stuff going on. But this should get us started. So in the next lesson, guys, we're going to start working on our player character controller. We're going to use the one provided by Unity and just make some tweaks to make it work for us. That's the next lesson, guys. My name is Austin, and I will see you there.